all right, now that our Synamity camera is all set up and we know what are the essential camera properties that we have to pay attention along the process, now we're actually ready to animate stuff in Unreal. And I honestly, this is my favorite part. So in the following section, I'm going to teach you how to animate camera, characters, animate any kind of properties that are found in the scene. So let's just dive into and see how we can make your scene alive. So just to specify, in level sequences, we have something called keyframes. And those are snapshots of properties which can be animated within a specific point of time. We can alter those properties to our own liking at different times and Unreal fill, fill in the motion, creating a smooth uh, animation as a result. Level sequences have a preset amount of keyframes that they can work with, but we can alter it if we are going into the playback options and set the start or the end frame. So if I set it to 500, notice that the whole range is going to be extended. The only thing that you have to remember that Unreal is not inclusive, which means that if I set the keyframes to 500, it's only going to render until 499. So just be aware of that one. First of all, I would like to show you how to animate a camera within level sequence. You can do the animation in any other DCC such as Blender, Maya, or 3ds Max, or you can do it within the editor itself. So first I'm going to show you how to do it within the editor. To do that one, first you have to select the camera by going into the level sequence or search camera in the outliner menu. Just make sure to select the one that you want to work with. Notice that after that, the details panel is filled with a bunch of properties that we can play around. The ones which are marked with rectangular icon means that they are animatable, but I'm going to cover that later. If I change any of the properties, it's going to be immediately reflected into the viewport. But if you want to use this one to animate our camera, it's a really troublesome way to do it because we have to go through them individually. There's a much better way. If you are talking about the animating the transform of the camera, we can just right click on the camera in the outliner and select the pilot camera or in the level sequence, click on this little camera icon. It will immediately lock the viewport to the camera view and we are going to look through the camera itself. And if we are holding the right mouse button down and using the WASD keys, we can navigate all around the scenes. If you don't like the speed of the camera, you can just change it by going into this section and set the camera speed to your liking. I like this frame. So the next step is to actually keyframe the transformation. You can do it individually by going into the details, such as location. And notice it's going to be creating a keyframe under the location itself. However, we can also keyframe groups. So in the level sequence under the transform, when I click on this icon, it's going to create keyframe for all the individual elements. So it's much better. So we have the first part of the animation. Now we have to go to another specific point of time in the level sequence and create another keyframe. And Unreal will create the motion in between. So if I click on this one and scrub to another position and take position of the camera and go to another camera frame, this is good. I can just keyframe it. And when I hit play, Unreal will create automatically the camera movement. And it's really amazing because it's going to interpolate in between to your own liking. If I don't like it, I can just select the keys and drag and drop down to another position, go to the front and play it. And now we can see it's already shortened. If you don't like the interpolation method, you can also select all of them and right click on it. And we are presented with different options. We have the cubic auto, which is a really smooth way to interpolate. But if you want to have like a linear option, you can just click on it and then we can see that it's going to be a linear way to go it. Only uh, provides another way to customize your keyframes and interpolate and it's called curve editor. You can access it by clicking on this small little icon. It's going to open up a whole new interface where you have a new set of tools to specify how you're going to interpret your keyframes, such as when I'm selecting the location, I can change it editing the curves itself. But I don't want to go into too deep because it can take another new video. So another really handy technique comes when you are trying to follow along a moving actor in your scene with your camera, especially if that moving actor is a supercar that is driving really fast. 
It would be a nightmare to manually keyframe your camera position so it would match the car speed and position all along the way, especially in a real life scenario where during the productions these things change all the time. Thankfully, there is an alternative way to do it. You have to attach your camera to the car itself and you can just adjust the relative position afterwards. To do that one, we have to select the camera, click on the plus sign and search for attachment. We are going to create a new binding. You can do that by going here and search for the actor that you want to attach it to. Just because we are using a skeletal mesh, we have to also specify which bond we want to attach it to. So just select the root one. Notice that the camera is not in the correct position. And also now we just created the attachment track from the position of the scrub. We have to make sure that it's extended all the way along. And we have to also zero out the location and the rotation. When we've done that one, don't worry, it's all black because we are inside the mesh. But when we are taking possession of it, just hold right mouse button and use the keys to move around and find the way that you are satisfied with the camera framing. Now, when we are clicking the animation to play, notice that we are moving all along with the car itself. Now you can apply your own position or animation however you want it. So this is how you attach your camera to any kind of actor in your level sequence. So the second way to animate your camera in your level sequence by importing animations from any other DCC. To do that one, select your camera first, right click on it and click import. Select the source file and open it. You're going to be prompted with a new window and make sure that the match by name only and the reuse keys is going to be disabled. When you click import, in the transformation key, we can see that we have the new keyframes and now we have all the movement. And that's it. Whether you are creating shots in your own personal project or in a large scale production, most probably you will need to animate a character at some point of time. So in the following section, I'm going to show you how to create animation within Adobe using Control Rig or import animation from other DCCs such as Maya, Blender, or even Motion Capture. So at the end of this section, you are going to have a solid understanding how you can combine keyframed animation along with the imported animation. Regardless if you are using MetaHuman or any other skeletal meshes, Contouring is a really amazing tool that gives you a quick and easy way to create detailed animations with an Unreal Engine. As I'm already using MetaHuman in my project, I can just take advantage of the built-in control rig that comes with it, and there is no further process needed to set it up. It's a really incredible tool that gives you the full creative control while keeping the whole animation process fast and simple. So the following shot was entirely animated in Unreal Engine using control rig. And it's a really amazing feature because I'm able to animate my character without actually leaving the editor itself. So I can have the final lightning, I can have the surroundings, and if I would have to modify anything, I can just do it right away. So let's just look into it, how can we actually animate stuff in Control Rig. First of the animation, select the Control Rig, and it's going to change the editor interface to animation mode. Notice that all the proxies that belongs to the Control Rig are appearing, and now we are able to manipulate them. The control rig proxies are actually giving a logic behind the bones, so we are not just uh, we are not just animating one individual bones, but multiple of them. So, if I just rotate this bone, it's going to lift up and bend all the finger joints. Also, same goes to the hand. If I move these proxies, it's going to modify everything below it. If you are satisfied with, it, just hit the keyframe. And Unreal is smart enough that it's going to keyframe everything that goes below it. So if I play now the animation, you can see it's going to slap the car instead of just gently brushing it. And it is that easy to animate with Control Rig. To import an external character animation into Unreal, it's going to be as simple as we did for importing a camera animation. To do that one, you have to right click in the content browser anywhere, click on the import to current folder, and search for the animation that you want to import. After that, you're going to be prompted with a new UI. And as we want to import animation, select it and select the skeleton. As we are using MetaHuman and that is already inside of it, we have to make sure to just to search for MetaHuman and use the base scale for importing the animation. Click import. And after it's finishing, we have the animation assets that we can browse. To actually use it for the sequencer, go into the sequencer, select the MetaHuman asset, go to the body, and click on the plus button and click on animation. 
search for the mob log, what we are already imported, and as it is new, it's marked with a star. When you click on it, it's going to be immediately reactivated. And now we already have it. If you want to have multiple one next to it, just go to the other side, paste it, and then make sure that when you are right clicking, use the match with bone in previous clip to root and mesh with the bone in next clip to root. Yes, and same goes on the other side. Root and root. So when I play the animation, we are going to have a smooth root motion animation applied to it. So it is that easy to import animation into your Unreal Engine. All right, so this brings an end to these sections. We learned a lot how we can animate in Unreal Engine, and we especially focused on how we can create our own camera animation in Unreal Engine, and how we can attach them to different actors. Also, we touched upon how we can import our own character animation from external sources, or even create it with Unreal Engine using Control Rig. With all of these combined, we are able to create an amazing motion that will bring your scene to the next level. So in the following section, I'm going to talk about post processes and how we can utilize them 